So, Mr. Dave, thanks for taking a few minutes to talk with us. Uh, you have a very interesting line of products for EVs, and why don't you tell us a little bit about yeah, it? Yeah, well, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, today, with the onset of all the new electric vehicles uh, out on the road, uh, they're growing and growing and growing. And uh, collision centers and auto dealerships have to learn how to deal with the safety issues uh, so they don't get uh, electrocuted. Yeah. So, <laughs> AMA has been fortunate enough to provide uh, uh, EV cabinets and safety equipment to uh, uh, all the Chrysler dealerships in North America, about half of the General Motors, Tesla, Rivian, and so forth. And now we're working on uh, getting these into collision centers to help save lives. Fantastic. One of the cool things I just got to show you, this is called, this is, this is called a rescue hook. A rescue hook. Sometimes people call it a hot stick. And... Its use is pretty obvious. It's before you're going to go to work on an EV, you would assemble this and put it over near the car. Okay? So before you work on an EV, you got to have this hook laying down. Put it, put it over near the car. If somebody makes a mistake and they get a charge of electricity, many times they get frozen to that wire or cable. Right. They can't break free. Oh. This is when your buddy comes in. I see. So that would be a really good buddy. This hook is fiberglass, right? So it's not going to be a conduit. It's an aluminum and bronze head. Ah. It's very heavy. And part of the reason it's heavy is when they use this hook, you hit them hard, and you yank. And the weight helps break that person free from the electrical cable. Has this ever been used in uh, a situation where someone was electrocuted? Yes, it has. And uh, more often it's... And the power lines and the power companies use this all the time. Oh, I see. And, uh, I do not know of one being used in the EV world, but yeah. uh, I hate to say it, but it's probably just a matter of time. So, I understand. Well, hey, here's something pretty cool I want to show you. Please. Time, time for an edit, right? Mm. So. So what we have here is lots of different equipment, and the most common used are your workman's gloves. It's your leather. These are linemen's gloves, same gloves oh, that a okay. linesman wears out in the field. Okay? Right, right. It's called a class O, protects for up to a thousand volts. Over these, you put rubber gloves, something similar to this. Right. And that slides over it. This happens to be a testing kit. You, oh. you can't have a hole. If you have a pinhole in here, electricity is going to find its way from you, from the uh, electrical source. It's going to find its way uh, right through the pinhole in here and into your body. And the oh, my gosh. So well, Dave, anytime, is, it, is there a shelf life for them, and do they have to be recertified, Dave? They do. There is a six-month shelf life, and they have to be recertified. But every time prior to putting these on, you test it up. I'll be good. That's interesting. Yep. Huh. And then if there's a slow leak in it, if there's a slow leak in it, it'll start to dissipate. Now, okay, they're supposed to fall down. Oh, well. But it would then collapse. Indeed. So Wonderful. All sorts of equipment. Well, that's great. Well, uh, Dave, thanks for sharing a few minutes with us, and uh, appreciate your taking the time. No problem. Thanks. You're awesome. And we appreciate all, our, all of our... Uh, uh, customers of the Buffalo area. Okay. Bye now. Go Bills. <laughs>